and I still haven't figured out what it is. Well, you live anyway. Yes. Hello, boys and girls. It is good to see everybody today. Um, we're just chatting here. Got strange things going on as usual. You never know uh, what's going to happen in a live. And today it's strange noises in the headphones. So you may hear some of those. You may not. A um, couple weeks ago, we we turned uh, uh, some ingrain bowls, little small bowls, using around the kitchen. And if you wanted to go to a larger size bowl, the same principles apply. Uh, there's not much difference other than the size of wood. You can do it in grain. You can do it face grain. Uh, make plates the same way, uh, just shallower. So uh, that's all easy peasy. Um, we did, um, what else have we done? We did bowls. We did, um, well, Wayne and Ruby, you guys are back there. Y'all might remember better than I do. What did we, we do? We, we, we did the uh, the miniature bowls last week. Yes, that's right. Um, what did we do the week we before? Do? Was it the bud uh, bars? That's it. Yes, thank you. Ah, oh, goodness, decoration kind of things. And uh, there again, uh, using the same principles, you can do cups, um, all kinds of things with that. Uh, so I'm going to do my third, and I think probably my final uh, tree to table. And we're going to do where to put there. It is utensils. Uh, this is a, a little spatula, uh, but because it's it's not real wide on the end, it could be easily used. I mean, you could stir with it, you could uh, scrape with it, but you could also eat with it, uh, scoop and, and eat. Uh, not hollowing out this so much. Yes, Ruby? <laughs> I saw you, hands going. You can also pick up some pumpkin pie or, or apple pie out of the dish with it. Absolutely. You can make that a little longer. Uh, so the same principles that will go into this uh, can be used for a lot of other things. You know, you could you could uh, split this and use it as a fork, um, take a carving knife and scoop it out so it's more of a spoon, uh, make it longer. And like Ruby said, use it as a spatula for pies and whatnot. Uh, so anyway, uh, these are, again, simple things you can do with small pieces of sticks, uh, sticks that fall out of your trees. This particular one, uh, has the end split off of it. Looks like maybe a, the limb broke. Uh, so we'll make that the spatula portion. These are going to be very easy. Uh, after I turn them, I'm going to have to disappear for just a few seconds, go down to the, the bandsaw and cut uh, some of this shape out. We'll bring it back and do some sanding here at the lathe. So uh, here with me today, you've already been introduced is uh, Ruby and Wayne. They're going to be helping out, keeping me straight and, and sharing with me anything that comes through the chat. And so uh, everybody. I'm, I'm going to put these guys back in the background. And I think Wayne's going to read out our, uh, our well, there it goes. Uh, slow reaction to, of the machine today. My word. Anyhow, uh, Wayne's going to read out who all's here. And I'm going to get going on, on turning our first little spatula. Okay. First person in the night was Weval from uh, Littleville, uh, who came in very, very early today, I've got to say. Uh, we've got Andy, the Valley Wood Turner in. Uh, Andy, uh, door 60 is here. Uh, Larry, Henry Scrollsaw is here. Fred Gulliver. Uh, going down, going down. Everybody saying hello to everybody. Uh, Chris from Bailey Woodworks. Roger Wallum. Said Fred. Lucy's in. Hey, Lucy. Uh, Dale, Old Man Rivers in. Hey, Dale. Uh, Barry Chitty is here. And Rob from Clingspore is here. Evening, Rob. Hi, Rob. And Pete from Twisted Trees, who is obviously seeing us how it's late in the evening uh, here. He's saying good morning to everybody, as he usually does. Alex is here. Evening, Alex. I just jumped there. Oh, hang on. I've missed a few people. I jumped all the way to the bottom. Did you, get go Fred, back. Anthony, did, did you get Fred Gilliver? I got Fred, uh, Anthony Green. Uh, Ruby's here, obviously. Marcel uh, Direct. Where's Marcel? Oh, Douglas is here. <laughs> I must have missed Marcel. Evening, Douglas. 
How can I miss Marcel? Uh, Chris from Billy's Woodworks has said, my mum used her wooden spoon for different things than food related. Yes, Chris. Yeah, I yep, know. Yep, yep. I've experienced that once or twice. I yes, try to be faster too. than that, but... If it, if it wasn't the spatula... Yep. It, was it usually worked, did it, Ruby? <laughs> Uh huh. I remember. Uh, oh God, I forgot his name. No, it doesn't matter. But um, there were some mothers that used to send you outside to get your own switch to beat you with. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, well, come on, Doug. That's why you don't. That's why you turn it off before you move your tail or your tool rest. Plus, I needed to tighten up anyway. This, uh, yeah, whatever this thing is. Um, steps. Um, right, right, can I just mention, um, before we get too far in, that Doug has just passed the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Yes. Congratulations, Doug. Incredible. I, I am, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's well been, done, uh, Doug. Well done. Long awaited for. <laughs> Long awaited for. I'll tighten that up just a wee bit more. Well, and, well, uh, oh, oh, okay, for those. That, oh, go on, Ruby. Go on. Well, I just said well deserved. All oh, right, okay. Uh, Brian El Tenero de Demira has just come in. And, hey, Brian. Uh, can, can I just say that um, Mark isn't here tonight because he's off on his holidays very early tomorrow morning he is fully recovered from the infection he had and he's off on his holidays that's excellent i'm glad he got that straightened out yes omar uh chris has also said um that his mother she also had a paint stir stick that had holes in it that would whistle when moving through the air mm-hmm and the sound made it hurt so much worse. Yeah, he didn't feel it much, but his older brother and younger brother felt it often. Andy, Wivy Woodshed's just come in. Good evening, Andy. That reminds me of when I was in school. If anybody in the class misbehaved, it was a ruler that they got over the knuckles of their hands. Yeah, I remember that. Or the, or the we also uh, the the school that I went to, um, they they actually still used the cane at the school that I went to. Mm. And Fred Gillerer said his dad used to send them to get a leather belt that was kept in the metal trunk under the stairs. <laughs> yep, my oh, dad, mercy, my dad mercy. did that too. Oh dear me. Well, this uh, th this went totally off piece, didn't it? <laughs> oh well, brings back a lot of memories. And uh, Norman Greenwell's in, and Colin's in as well. Hey, hey Norman, folks. Colin. Oh, Susie's just arrived. Good evening, Susie. Susie. Hi, Susie. Uh, yeah, she's. Um, I, I think she's just finished work. She just got home. Good to have everybody in today. It's it's always good to have a bunch of folks in the in the chat. All right, just working this handle down. This little branch was not exactly straight, so there's a good bit of working to to get it where it's round. Of course, you don't have to have it perfectly round. Now you're using your skew there. I am. Not the normal thing for me to do, but I figured just why not? It's a long, thin spindle. Why not? Why not? Rob from Clingsboro said, rings and spoons. <laughs> two things that never should be turned light. Lol. <clears throat> Pete says, I always, I was always a well-behaved child, so never got cane, belted, slippered, or anything else. At least none I can remember after all the clips around the year. <laughs> and and Mar Marcella said, okay, enough. Twelve years of Franco-American parochial school. I survived. Yes. And obviously we did too. 
<laughs> yep. And Chris at uh, Bailey's has said, definitely each generation has their own degree of punishment. Now the kids get the screen screen time taken away. <laughs> oh, Murphy. Yeah. Now Rob wants to know if Pete turned his own Halo or if he bought it. Douglas has said one of his teachers could open another student's knuckles. The tip of his ruler had a brass tip. No, that's just nasty. Oh, yeah, it is. Today, that would be uh, a criminal offense. Oh, definitely. In fact, I think mo most um, corporal punishment is. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. Yeah, Todd Glencove's just come in. Hey, Todd. And Roger, Roger Kent's in as well. I remember once when I was teaching, the principal called me in to witness him punishing a student. And after he had hit him twice, I stopped them and told the student to leave and go back to my room. I got into a lot of trouble over that, but he was he was out of line. Oh, definitely. Went a little overboard, did he? Yeah. Yeah, Alex has said oh, there's a lot of this stuff coming out now. Alex has said, uh, as I was sent to boarding school, he used to get the slipper from the dorm master and very often they came from the head or deputy. Yeah, and Rob is also, Rob from Klingspor has said, and the damn oh. teachers with a blackboard rubber could get you with 20 paces easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that happened a lot as well. Switching over to my spindle gauge so I can get in this this little area right here. Just making a little ball of separation here. And my my one inch skew was just too big for me. Okay, um, now I'll come back to Lucy in a minute, but Pete is asking you, Doug. That skew handle is very long. Is it stock or your design? That is a. There we go. That is a stock. That's straight from the store. And uh, I think you're right. I think it's long. But it's a, yeah, it's a pinnacle skew. And it's it's the same, or almost the same. It's actually a little longer than my spindle gouge. Right, Doug. We should have probably said this earlier on. Can you go to overhead, please? I can, in fact. That was Rob asking for that. All right. Thank you, um, Rob. I'm glad you did. Going back to the school thing, uh, Lucy said he, she remembers the headmaster dragging a boy out of assembly by his hair. Hmm. There was just a big thing in our news here. Um, I don't even know where it was, but a, a teacher did that to a student, pulled him out of a classroom by the hair, and that was going, it was definitely going to court. Yeah. Uh, um, Susie is asking, what is Doug turning? Doug is turning um, a spatula. So to speak. <laughs> so to speak. So to speak. All right, just going to move my, my tool rest down so I can get the head of this thing. So I'm going to lower that a bit as well. I've made them, but I've never turned them quite the way you're doing it. Yeah, it's it's like everything else, isn't it, Ruby? There's 15 different ways to turn it without any issue. Um, I turned one practicing yesterday that just simply did not work. I turned the second one, um, this one, that did not give me one issue at all. So it's just a matter of, it's the wood, it's also just kind of what you can have in your head at the moment. I'm actually going to shorten this one. I'm not going to go all the way to the end with it. Okay. Uh, Pete said, I think I would struggle with that skew. My grip is usually on the metal or first few inches of the handle. Yes. Well, when I'm using the skew, Pete, I'm often 
you know, that far up, sometimes all the way up on it. Um, yeah, I don't typically use the entire thing either. I suppose with a long handle like that, you could keep the, the end of the handle um, into your body so it's, it doesn't stray anywhere. Well, right? if you were using the skew on a very large piece and you were, for example, cutting into it with the toe, you might need that long handle in order to make the reach go all the way in. Yep, it definitely true. gives some leverage, yeah. Definitely gives some leverage. All right, that's that's getting where I want it. Yeah, Colin, as I said, my craft teacher had a hand brush. It did not get used for sweeping. I've got brushy, and that always gets used for sweeping. <laughs> I had a high school shop teacher that uh, he was one of the few people in the whole school who could get away with a little bit of corporal punishment. And But he would never throw a thing. Um, he could look at you and you just melt. <laughs> Some of the biggest boys in school would not take wood shop because they had start, they'd started to, got in trouble the first day, and they were afraid to go back in the shop. Then there was that handful like me who couldn't get enough shop. Then there was a handful like me who wanted shop and couldn't get into it because we right. were girls. Right. I don't know that we had any girls try. All right. I'm going to do a little more playing back here on the tail end. So my, to tell you the truth, we shouldn't, we probably shouldn't have gone down this route tonight, uh, because there's some absolutely nasty stuff coming out here. Uh oh. Yeah, Norman Greenwell said our gym teacher used used to use the leather bound end of the climbing ropes. Mm. Hey. Well, I think what it shows, Wayne, is that we're of an older generation. Oh, a definitely. Lot of, a lot of the younger people think that they've got it so rough today and have no idea of what we endured back then. Yeah. We made enough jokes of the uphill both ways in six feet of snow. Yeah, but that was true hard. in my case. We used Probably to get more for you than most of us. That much <laughs> Niantic River Woodcrafting has just come. Oh, it's Chris Nealon. Sorry about that. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. I need to get a little more off the top of this. I've got a little too much bark still. And Roy is here. Good evening, Roy. Hey, Roy. Hi, Roy. And Ben's just come in as well. Hey, Ben. I think what would be ideal for these would be a piece of wood. If you had a stick that came down, you know, and, and then expanded at the very end, um, that or you start like uh, Richard Rafen does with a piece of flat stock. Oh, I got most of the bark off. That'll sand or cut. That'll cut off, I guess. Very good. So there's there's one. I that. actually, tell you the truth, Doug, I thought you were actually going to start with a piece of flat stock. Yeah, that helps you see it a little bit. I, I played with my exposure here a bit yesterday, and I did not uh, get it perfect, but I got it better than it was. Okay, there's one. Let's go ahead and do another one, and I'll go cut them, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. Roy, what he's making is a spatula. And Peter said it's all sort of swings and roundabouts. It went mm. too far in our day, and it's gone too far in the in the other direction today. But one day it will find a level. But isn't that the way of everything? Um, things go to a, a bad place in one direction, and we finally figure that out. And then all of a sudden it swings 
like a pendulum to the far side. Yep. And oh my goodness, you know, then we decided, well, it wasn't so bad the way we had it before. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's not getting any better folks. I'll tell you that. Right. There's a few more coming up. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stop uh, comment, commentating on, on the, the comments are coming through referring to what we were talking about now. Nope. Let, let's, let's well, get back onto the wood turning. Let me ask you this. When is Harrogate? Uh, Harrogate is the 10th, 11th, and 12th of November. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was October. No, 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 it's November. Oh, Doug's in from Pool Barn. Good evening, Doug. Hey, Dougie. Hey, Doug. Well, this weekend uh, coming up, we have a easy wood demonstration at Busy Bee Tools in Toronto. And the following weekend is our wood show. And this will be the first one we've had now in five years. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen a couple of posts from Rob saying that he's going to be there with his uh, abrasive grit and some uh, Hampshire Sheen products. Mm hmm Well, I'll be there representing both Easy Wood and Record Power. Excellent. Uh, Rob from Clingsport has said, Harrogate, yikes. I'm going to need a holiday after. So much work to get it all sorted. A lot of people <laughs> don't realize how much work people who are demonstrating or presenting at these shows do long before the shows happen. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um, Rob sent me a, the, the photograph. He'd, he'd been up to the head office here in, in the UK, the Clingsport head office, and he sent me a photograph of the um, the stand that is going to be at at, um, at Harrogate, and it looks absolutely brilliant. I've got to say, it really does. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, there's uh, the, the as well as the products on sale. There's also a TV screen there, and I'm thinking. I'm the, Rob will probably correct me on this, but I'm thinking that's going to be doing the uh, videos of the um, the the Kling Sport products as well. Okay. Over the weekend. Somebody came in. Who and was. Jennifer's just come in. Hey, Good Jennifer. evening, Jennifer. Somebody called Fishing has just come in as well. Hmm. I missed that one. I'm going back. Me too. And I can't see it. Doug, you have a question about what grind that is on your tool. <laughs> it looks about 45 to me. Um, get where I can show you this a little better. That, I don't know how to tell you because I've never measured it. That's the same grind as my bowl gouge. On right. The spindle gouge. Right, it, it looks like the heel. Yeah, it, it looks like a, a 45 on the bevel and then cut back a bit different. Right. But yeah, the, it has a secondary the, bevel. Yeah, yeah but the, from, the, the, the from top there is, forward, yeah, that's, the, that's the actual cutting bevel. And then from yeah. there to there is a secondary bevel. And I just ride that up the, the, the wheel and grab it off. And it's not as sharp as it will be eventually. I just haven't gotten there yet. I the, do the, the top, same the thing. Top, the, the top grind is definitely not a 45. That's, that's a very, very tight grind, that is. No, that's about 45. Well, You're the, about the, the top the one? Bevel? Yeah. No, no, not that, not, not that this one. This is no. not 45 here. The, cut, the cutting edge. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's not 45 from here to here. That's, no, that's uh, uh, it's just slightly rounded. Yeah, 
but from there up, the the bevel is is close to 45. It's somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, way back when, um, and there may be one or two on here who remember when the uh, Wood Central was was huge. Um, we had a, a Wood Central gathering just outside of Atlanta, and the guy who was hosting, Terry Daniel, he was talking about how he, because the stones, the stones grind away. They get smaller and smaller. So how do you make sure you're getting the same, in the same spot with your, with your uh, sharpening jig every time? Well, he was, he talked about using a stick as a measure so that no matter how much that that uh, stone ground down, you could get the exact grind every single time. Well, I started doing that, and it didn't matter what my angle was because I was getting consistent. And I used the same grind, whatever that is. I've used the same grind now for 20 years. Whatever that is, that's the same grind I put on this on this spindle gouge. Now, Douglas is asking what wood you're using, Doug. To the best of my knowledge, this is a piece of poplar out of uh, the tree in my backyard. Um, I'm pretty sure, let me stop, maybe I can tell. Uh, no, I don't think this is poplar. I think this is maple. Uh, it'd be a silver maple at that, hmm. which is a little harder. Silver maple or water maple. Yeah, the bark's a little different than our silver maple. Yeah. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Sure. I'm just trying to get it nice and a nice cut down through here. Uh, I started to say a while ago, the, the grind on this spindle gouge, uh, the reason I grind it the way I do uh, was more, watching a demo by Mark Soleil. He's been around a long time. And uh, this is what he suggests. And, and uh, he really pushes the whole idea of slicing the wood. Right. Riding um, the bevel and slicing. Yes. Turn it up on edge. Uh, turn your spindle gouges up on edge. Let the, let the bevel actually do the work that it was designed to do. And so uh, that's how I, I had a spindle gouge, um, but I did not like it. It was, well, it was too big for one thing. Uh, it was a full three-quarter inch. Wow. If, if not, uh, well, it's, yeah, three-quarter inch. And uh, I tried to sharpen it similar to this, and it just, it was as aggravating as much as anything. So it just, I couldn't get it small enough. So this is a half-inch spindle gouge. And I think I want to go back, come back uh, some t at some point and get a 3 8 spindle gouge. And I'll uh, do the same thing with it. Yeah, 3 8 is my favorite size. Now, Henry, sure. is, Henry is asking, what would you use to seal this? I'm, I will just use, uh, on both of these, I will use uh, actually all three. The one I did yesterday and the two I'm doing today. Uh, I'll use some walnut oil, and it'll have to be replenished from time to time. Um, but the walnut oil does at least dry, unlike unlike mineral oil. Or uh, I heard somebody even today talk about they they were using uh, raw linseed oil. I'm no. thinking if you are, <laughs> that's a major mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think he was. I don't think he was. I use um, salad bowl finish for uh, yeah these. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, there's a product over here by Chestnut, which is a 
it's called a food safe finish with it which is an oil finish which would be good on these you can also buy from um the likes of home base which is one of the i, I suppose in the states you class them as a big box store they do a um an antibacterial uh worktop finish which is very good for food use as well yeah i saw somebody else using that the other day yeah now i don't i don't know if anybody uh, mentioned it while i was away but uh fishing by faith outdoors uh came in earlier on and it's his uh, their first time here well so, so glad to have you I'm glad you're here so glad to have you it's uh always good to have a new name don't uh and uh can i just say thank you to norman Greenwell for uh, pointing point me back into the comments as to where they came in. Lucy saying, does home base still exist? Yes, Lucy, it does. Rob has made a point that linseed and rag is a bad combo, and I now, agree with that. Uh, no now, question. Right. Okay, now Rob said that. There has been a video going around on YouTube and Facebook. I don't know if he put it on, on um, Instagram as well. But this is the guy who has done uh, what he did in his workshop. He divided his workshop or the part of the floor of the workshop out into, I can't remember, it was around about um, 20 squares, something like this. And he put a whole load of different um rags with oil on uh paper with oil on and a whole load of different things to see if there was actually any flash point where things just immediately burst into flames you will be surprised if if you can find it go and look for it you will be surprised at what happens when you put the likes of oily rags oily paper and things like this into a waste bin that was a super interesting video. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Pete mentioned. I watched it. I watched it teetotally from the very beginning to the very, very end. And it was. Uh, it was scary. It was. Uh, Pete mentions that Ikea do the worktop oil. And being Scandinavian, it has a jumble of letters that make no sense unless you speak the language as a name. <laughs> That's true. All right. Now, the, the, thing, the thing that I like about the, the, home, the, the one that home base does is that it does say it's antibacterial. Mm-hmm. Now, Rob has said that the very fast evaporation rate of linseed oil is what causes the reaction which causes a lot of heat and then flames. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go and look at the moment for, for that particular video, but if I can find it over the next 24 hours, I'll uh, see about putting a... Um, uh, Lucy said, didn't one just keep reigniting? Yes, Lucy, it did, even when he took it outside. It kept on reigniting, yes. So Lucy's obviously seen that. If I can find it, I'll I'll put a link in on my live tomorrow night. Uh, if I don't find it, obviously I won't. I think Doug at the moment is away at the, the band's off. I think so. The wood has disappeared. The tools have disappeared. And Chris Nealon has said uh, they lost a family of four here in Connecticut from a linseed oil fire. If you are a woodworker, if you're a wood turner and you want to use linseed oil, use boiled linseed oil. Or, yeah, in tongue oil, you want to use polymerized. 
All right, you all were guessing correctly. <laughs> the discussion was going on and I just I let it go. So we'll rearrange the lathe and get the sanding pad on here. Ah. That's the only thing uh, I've said it several times. I've got to uh, rearrange how my lathe sits because I have to turn the headstock to get the drive center out of the spindle. So anyway, other than that, it works great. I love it. <laughs> uh, because of a wall or something close. Yes. To you. Yeah. yeah. Over, over here on my left side, I'm, I'm what, uh, six, seven inches away from the wall. And so it's just too close for my my uh, knockout bar to go into the spindle and knock things out of it. So, yeah. anyway. So, uh, a bit of a funny one. Brian with the Y has said, what a shame man didn't invent linseed oil before he spent all that time rubbing sticks together. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that... Doug, Doug, Douglas has said, that bun saw is a bit of a trot away. It's uh, 24, 27 feet away. There you go. <laughs> then yeah, my, my, you my front gun thin. I know good and well. I've got, well, here, we'll just do it this way. Oh, I know. I turned Christmas trees yesterday and I threw my sandpaper away when I got done because it was all worn out. There's a limit to how long I'll use that stuff. I'm gonna turn the speed down to right at a thousand. You see what, what I did was just simply cut that so that it had a kind of a rough shape to what I was looking for. And now I can come back. This is a uh, yeah, 60 grid is what I've got on here right this minute. Mike from Dances with Aardvarks has joined us. Hi, Mike. How are you doing, now, Mike? The, I, I keep on seeing this, but if um, if people aren't following Mike on, on Facebook, because he tends to be on Facebook, go along and follow Mike. Uh, uh, Mike Sem, it's C-E-M-M on Facebook. Because this guy does some absolutely amazing work. The amount of geometry he has, he, he puts into his pieces is, it's just out there, man. It yeah, really that is. that last bit was pretty amazing. I can't even say what the name of it. I, I it just, I can't wrap my tongue around it. It's too much, nope. too many syllables. Too many syllables, as they say. Now, um, I mentioned him a while ago, so I don't feel bad about saying his name again. Uh, watch Richard Rafen turn his uh, his spatulas. Is just to watch him is amazing. Anyway, I, I enjoy watching his his work. Um, was watching him when I first started turning. And uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And he'll do stuff that you'll think, wow, you're not supposed to do that. But he's done it for 50 years. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he knows what the guy knows what he's doing. So we can't fuss about what he does. For instance, he turns a he'll turn a bowl and never pick up a bowl gouge. Does it all with a spindle gouge. Yeah, Rob from uh, Clean Sport said, Mike, that one person in each class that got algebra. No, it's more about geometry, to tell you the truth, uh, yeah. Rob. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, definitely geometry. Well, I remember once being with Ray Key, and he was talking about Richard. And he was relating to us how he visited Richard in his shop one day. And somebody Richard did not want to see came in. So what Richard did was he arranged for all of the shavings to fly at that person, no matter <laughs> where he stood in the shop. Finally, oh. the guy left. 
Hey, Andrew, EGK, Precious, has just joined the chat. Hey, hey, you Precious. One day you'll have to explain how he got that name, Precious. He got the name Precious. Uh, do you remember Lord of the Rings, Ruby? Yes. Well, Lord of the Rings, do you remember Gollum? I do. Yeah, Gollum, when he had his Precious, which was right. the ring. Now, Andrew's Precious is the Easy Woods number one hollower. Ah, okay. And he, ah. he, he, he's actually, the, there is a clip of him. Uh, my Precious. His, <laughs> yeah, sitting on his tetty <laughs> with my Precious. Yeah, yep. Of course, Jamie did the meme, so. Uh... Yeah. Your, your, fa your face shield's getting in the way, Doug. Oh, I'm sorry. There. We'll forgive you this time. Well, I should have had it down anyway, even while I was right. saying it. Can I just say to Andrew, um, EGK, um, you are part of the group, Andrew. The link is there if you want to pop in for a few. Absolutely. Absolutely. Always glad to have you. Now, one thing I did not do, I did not make sure that this joint was nice and clean before I took it to the saw, but we got it now. It's close enough. Okay. Now, Pete says, that, remember, Richard has already spent all his catches, and he knows the sound of wood before it goes wrong. <laughs> Many good tips, but some you need to be cautious when copying. I hate, well, to, say I... It, hate to say it, Pete, but the, first, the last time I saw Richard inside of five minutes, he had already had 10 catches. <laughs> yeah, and as I would also say on that, uh, yeah. That that's the same as, as copying anybody. If you if you are going to copy somebody who has had years and years and years of um, experience behind them, just remember they have got years and years and years of experience behind them. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And the um, prof is in even in prof. Hey, prof. For instance, when no. Richard doing an ingrain bowl. He does that thing where he takes his his spindle gouge and he goes in and it's inst well instead of going in the center and pulling out or even from the outside and going in he goes in and then goes up to the top and brings and it back down the other side the other, yes the other side yeah. is what's getting cut now um, that that is the the proper explanation of a back cut right yes with, when when people say they are, they are doing a back cut when they're doing spindle turning, they will go into the sender and pull it back out to their left hand side. Mm -hmm. That is that is not a proper back cut. Richard Raffin does a proper back cut when you go in and you actually turn the spindle gouge, so you end up cutting on the opposite side of the piece where you're supposed to be cutting. Right. I'll change cameras here. And I think I can show you. Oh, I'll use this piece right here. I get my vacuum out of the way. Instead of coming from here toward the center, like you do with a face grain, center grain you, or uh, end grain, you typically go in the center and come back out this way. But what Richard does is he goes in the center and then comes up this way. And he's cutting over here. Not over here, not on his side, but on the other side. And like, Wayne said, that's that's truly a back cut. <laughs> and it's it's wild to watch. But you're talking about taking some wood out. He can take some wood out that way. Oh, definitely. Especially but on end grain. It. And he predominantly uses that on end grain anyway. Uh, only in grain, I do believe. Yeah, it, it, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like using a, um, a ring tool or a hook tool. Yes. Uh, because of the, a lot of the um, Eastern Europeans, when they're using a hook tool or a ring tool, will go to the opposite side to cut. Mm hmm. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yes. Just doing a little hand sanding on here. I could switch my camera back and you could see what I'm doing a little better. There we go. Yeah, I'm on the right one. 
and these are, um, you know, I, some people have, have said in the past, you know, you, you could use some really nice wood and make those so pretty. But these are really utilitarian pieces. They're not meant to be pretty. They're meant to be yeah. used. Um, that's one reason I didn't dig around, find a nice piece of apple or a piece of walnut, which all could be used. That's not, not a problem. Um, but why? Uh, if you're going to use it and you're going to wash it, why not just use whatever you got, which this whole series has been about, using the using branches and limbs that don't cost you anything to make something you can use. They still look nice, especially if you take the time to sand them. So, and Rob from Cop Owl is here. Good evening. Hey, Hi, Rob. There we go. Just finishing up a little... A little what have I got uh, 240 at this point just rounding over the edges a little bit knocking some of the high spots off now I noticed you put a curve on yours on one side makes it closer to a spoon that way there you go. If I turn that around the other way, you can see it a little better. Yeah, they're both curved. So, uh, and that one's got a, a little bit of a skew on the edge. This one's more straight across. They're just different. And there again, they could be used easily to eat with, or you could stir with them. Um, this one needs to go back on the sander. I think it's a little, it's a little thick on this back end back here, but that's that's the name of that tune. There you go. So simple. Simple little turnings that can be done, given as gifts, uh, brownie points for your spouse or significant other. Um, like I said, this one's got a little bit of walnut oil on it. This one with these two will get walnut oil. I'll do a little bit more sanding. That one's still got some saw marks in it. Um, backside too. Man, I did a rough job of cutting that, that one. Anyhow, oh, I'll sand them a little more and get a little oil on them, but they don't have to be perfect. Don't have to be perfect. And Peter oh. said that utilitarian purpose is why I, I would put no finish on them, use sure. them, bung them in the dishwasher, then in a year or two, buy some more from me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, you could. You don't have to put a thing on them. Just use them. Wash them however throw you know throw them in the dishwasher if you if you don't really don't care uh throw them in your sink and wash them up um if you want to keep them a while every couple of weeks put some more oil on them um you know if they're going to be used in the kitchen used often use some olive oil on them um uh, I, I don't yeah. think i'd use vegetable oil that's nasty stuff no, 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 don't, don't use olive oil or vegetable oil because no. they, they both go rancid they both go rancid. Um, yeah. Yeah. The one to use, said, yeah. The one to use would be um, mineral oil. It does not go rancid and you can eat it. Now, the, the, the thing is, how many people in the kitchen, now I'm, I'm, I'm talking from experience here, how many people in the kitchen use wooden spoons and wooden spatulas? I know for a fact in my kitchen, I have got around about a dozen wooden t wooden spoons, and I've got at least three uh, wooden spatulas that I use uh, on a regular basis. None right. of them, none of them have got any finish on them. Okay. Yeah, mine don't have a finish either. No, uh, Douglas Moomer said, "Does using them in hot cooking cause any toxins to be released?" Depends on what wood you use. I would not recommend using exotics. I would use right. beech. In fact, I would use predominantly beech if I'm mm -hmm. going to use them for cooking utensils. Yeah, yeah. don't don't use you. No. Uh, no. <laughs> my, 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 my use, right, seeing that, there's, there's a guy in the UK, uh, Tobias K. There was a, a discussion going on on Facebook, oh, God, that must have been six, seven months ago, now, where people were talking about the toxicity of you 
And he turned around and said, he has used a U ball as a cereal ball for the past 35, 40 years and has had no problems whatsoever. Hmm. But I would still recommend not using U. Well, he said he has been using it as a cereal bowl, right? Yep. So no heat. No, no heat. Yeah. And, and what I understand, what I have heard several folks who know more than I do have said it's heat and alcohol is what draws the toxicity out of the wood. So, you know, if you're not putting heat to it, you're not putting alcohol in it. And I don't I've, want to I've use got, it, but <laughs> I've got to say, look, all all of the wooden spoons and wooden utensils that I use, they all go in the dishwasher. Hmm. Okay. I think my wife sticks hers in the dishwasher as well. I don't. Yeah, she, you know, she's of the same opinion I am. They're disposable. Use them when they break or fall apart. Throw them away and get something new. Yeah. Right, Alan Gibb is said, uh, guys, is there any woods not to use? What I would recommend, Alan, is a uh, search bar, go into the wood database, and there is a, a section in the, the wood database where you can look up the toxicity of woods. So go into there, look up the toxicity of woods, and um, find ones that you can't or, or you shouldn't use uh, with food. Yeah, I, I would think you would want to stick with hardwoods primarily um, just because they'll hold up better for you in the long run. Um, but the yeah, majority, uh, I've got to say the majority of stuff that you get these days, or certainly when, when it comes to wooden spoons, spatulas, things like this, they tend to be made out of beech or they mm -hmm. tend to be made out of bamboo or... Yeah they tend to be made out of acacia. Acacia. That'd be awfully pretty wood to use for utensils. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it, 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 it does get used a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I've been doing, or that's what we've done today. Uh, this is what I was doing just before we came on, and that doesn't look like much, but that will become a Christmas tree. I've got uh, eight of those prepared with, with tenons on one end, tapered on the other, uh, ready to be turned into trees. Uh, and I've got another 25 or so branches that have been cut, ready to do the same thing on. Uh, getting ready to, I've got about 180 or so more of those to do. I'm gonna be so tired of turning Christmas trees. <laughs> Wait, that's I'll, I'll accept Alex has just said said to me, did I see his post above? I'm just going to have to go back. God, it must be a long way back. <laughs> now, Peter said that Kew Gardens have tested and stated that you timber is not toxic but I wouldn't recommend it for wet food use. But then I also say don't eat any wooden bowls. Yep, exactly. Unless you've got strong teeth and you don't mind picking um, bits of fibers out of, out of between your teeth, don't eat wooden right. bowls. Alex, I can't find that. Oh, Alex has sent me a, a message. It's okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch up with that. There were a lot of people, yeah, I did that big whatever it was 13 13 and a half inch black walnut bowl uh made with some crotch wood and a lot of people said that is too pretty to eat with even my wife says you're not eating out of that <laughs> well i ate salad out of it last night i love to eat salad out of that bowl i can i can take that great big bowl and put my little pile of lettuce in there and anything else i'm putting in with it i got plenty of room to mix it it doesn't jump out of the bowl and then when I get done, I take it upstairs to the sink and I take my wet washcloth and I wipe it out and I take a paper towel and I wipe it off and I put it back. And so it's ready to go. Uh, I'll probably eat out of it today. I won't eat the bowl, but I eat out of the bowl <laughs> and enjoy it. 
and enjoy it. So I'm, I'm, you know, those folks who said I wouldn't eat out of it. I, yes, I do. <laughs> My sister wants it for Christmas and she's not getting it. Um, she may get another one, but she's not getting that one. <laughs> in fact, I'm looking at a piece of wood over there in the corner now that I might turn her a bowl out of. So anywho, if you all got all the questions and everything, I guess we can call it an early evening tonight, this afternoon, whatever it is. Made a spur well, that, was good, that was a good demo, Doug. Well, thank you. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> was. It definitely was. I'm yeah, sure you gave people some ideas for gifts they could make. Absolutely, just a small Wait. branch that fell out of a out of a tree. You know, Doug from Doug from Paul Barnes is asking, "What's the swing on that lid, Doug?" Sixteen inch. This is a sixteen inch. Um, that. 13 and a half inch walnut bowl that I'm eating out of uh, is probably the second largest. I've turned a 14 or 14 and a half inch out of, on it before. Um, and like any lathe, you've got, you got a certain amount of, it says it's 16. If I put a, a 16 inch piece of wood on here, it's going to be touching the ways. Uh, so I can go, you know, 15 and seven eighths. Uh, but then how do you get a, a 15 and 7 eighths perfect circle, perfectly centered to turn it? So, you know, probably 15 Something. and a half is max, uh, 15 and a quarter, 15 and a half. So that's one reason I got the big bowl lathe over there uh, that I've got to work on so I can turn some big stuff like 20, 22 inches. And that's Wait. fun. <laughs> Micah said the best use of wooden spoons is eating the cake mixture, cake mixture of your mum's mixing bowl. No, oh, you wouldn't dare around our place. <laughs> oh, I can remember getting the mixing the the beater thing, the mixing beaters. Oh and yes, licking, licking those clean. And oh yeah, the, 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 hey Doug, Doug, I still do that for my wife whenever yeah. I'm doing that. She always gets the mi the the mixer to to lick it off clean. Absolutely. And we did that, you know, it, the first of us three kids to get to the kitchen or first two out of the three, we get beaters. Well, that's all fine and good until they came out with the news that eating raw egg was probably not the smartest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and mother being a med tech, she now no more beaters. <laughs> right. A, a couple of people have put comments in with the, the, the size of, um, bowl you can actually do the reason that they call this uh, because my lathe is a 16 inch lathe as well i can do a 16 inch bowl blank if you cut uh just about exactly a six inch um bowl blank certainly on my lathe what happens is is that you've got the bedways but the uh, the 16 inch ball blank will actually go between the two bedways so you can actually turn a 16 inch ball blank now it all depends on how wide apart the uh, the bedways are Boys, uh, yeah yeah right yep no question from from the center of the spindle here to the top of my bed is exactly eight inches so yeah, if you had it perfect, maybe if, if my ways were just slightly wider, I could probably get a 16 inch on there. Um, the only time I've tried it was not with a perfectly round blank to begin with. So, well, Doug, you could just turn your head stop. I can. That's that's the, the fun thing is I can turn my head stock and I do that uh, quite often, especially if I'm doing a bowl and it's time to do the inside. There's where my headstock goes. <laughs> it's a lot, lot easier on your back. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, it certainly is. The only well, outside, the, outside the barn is commented, but I'm not going to read that because it was just dug from Paul Barn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, outside the barn. Yeah, that gets that gets another view. <laughs> By the way, the, those of you who came in uh, after we got started. Uh, 
thank you, thank you, thank you. I hit a thousand subscribers uh, last night. Uh, uh, Wayne and I were talking about it. YouTube will probably take away three or four now, but uh, <laughs> we're we're at a thousand. We're at a thousand, and I am happy about that. We'll be doing a, a giveaway here in the next uh, week or two. Um, in fact, uh, uh, I can show you one of the one of the prizes. It's gonna be that little joy. Oh, my, oh my you three did wings. one of those ribbon finials. Yeah, my yes, three wing uh, piece for yeah, Steve. Yeah, and then the ribbon D finial. Doug and I had a, a, a quick chat about that before before we went live, and uh, that's the first thing I said. He, he did a, a matte ribbon finial. Yeah. Now, which which blue blue coloring did you put on it? That is uh, color shift pigment, the arcane color shift pigment or uh, uh, powder color shift powder from Emma, the tiny okay. turner. Yep. Uh, tiny little pots of them um but i've used that three or four times and i can't tell i've used any out of it it um, goes a hell of a long oh, way doesn't it it does it does it really I, does i put a piece of paper down underneath it as i was putting it on the the ribbon and uh, i am amazed uh what little bit ended up on the paper i put what i could back in the pot there's still a good bit on the paper that i couldn't get off uh, yeah, but you can see there um, it's coming up on the camera pretty much purple. I'm looking at it. I see purple, blue, uh, get the light on it just right. Green is in there. Um, I'm amazed at how much is inside this ribbon. Um, I put all the state, all the size on the outside, but there's a lot of that powder that's ended up on the inside. It's still on the so, inside as well. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Larry. The box, Larry Larry from Henry's has said, um, first time he's be, been able to watch in a long time. It has been a while, Larry, to tell you the truth. It's been a long time. Good to have you. Good to have you. All right, folks. We're going to let you. Okay. Blue, purple and blue, maybe a bit of gold. Yeah. Doug, you're right. It's, that stuff shows a little bit of everything. Alan wants uh, to know if you're going to show how you did the ribbon. Um, not today, but maybe a, a oh, future. That, that's right. a, it's now, not I, hard. I, <laughs> right. I, I don't know, but um, I certainly saw um, um, a, a Facebook from Matt Harbour today um, with a link to his YouTube mm -hmm. for how he did that ribbon. Yes. It's also on the Worldwide Woodturners YouTube channel yeah, as well. It went on today. If you are if you are not a member of the Worldwide Woodturners group on Facebook, please go along, become a member. Um it is one of the I've got to say it's one of the best Facebook Facebook groups out there. It is and it's free. And, and it's yeah. free and yes. it is one of the best websites out there. I mean and, the, the, and they the need amount of yeah, they meet on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. There is everything on the, all the videos on there. The, there's links to various other things. They've got a swap page or a barter uh, page, barter site barter, on there. Yes, barter page. Um, every, every Wednesday night, there is a, a meeting where there's lots of discussion goes on and uh, demonstrations as well. On the Wednesday night, it's it, I'm seeing Wednesday night for me because it's at midnight. It, it's an excellent group to be part of. Yes. Go along, have a look at it, join the group, and um, just join in because it's really, the, really good. The uh, easy way to get there is go to the website, which is worldwidewoodturners.org, O-R-G. Scroll down just a little bit uh, on a PC. I think it's over on the left side. You'll see a button that says uh, click here to go to meeting. You click that button. That will take you over to Zoom. And then uh, one of the moderators will let you in. There's no password to know. There's no codes or anything like that. You just click that button on the website. It'll take you to Zoom and uh, you'll get a chance to check your camera, your microphone, and uh, you'll go. you'll be admitted in. As soon as you say go to uh, go into the meeting uh, or join the meeting, something like that, uh, one of the moderators will let you in. That's and me a lot one, of times. So, <laughs> and yeah, there's that, also, that. there's also a button 
beside that that says join the club. Yeah. Which is, uh, that's that button doesn't do anything. <laughs> the club is free. Um, you know, it's, it's simple, simple. Um, if you want to join in on the Facebook stuff, there's three or four questions to answer. Uh, and as long as you're not silly with your answers, you'll be admitted. Um, so anyhow, it's, it's a lot of fun. Please do join us on Wednesday nights. It's, it's a blast. It's a blast. All right, guys, we're going to go. We're going to punch this one in the head and uh, be done with it. Um, it's been fun. It's been a lot of, uh, a lot of good questions, a lot of good comments. Just trying to switch my camera back here. There we go. And uh, the the projects came out good, and I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Well, go there. Golly, can't push enough buttons. Um, anyway, the projects went well. It's been good. Uh, most of y'all have things to do, like just like I do. So we're gonna go. Uh, thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Wayne, for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. There, we'll get You're you guys welcome. back as well. And. Uh, uh, come back again next week. Thanks again for subscribing. If you if you're not a subscriber, please do. We do. I'd appreciate it as we continue to grow the channel. So until next week, we'll see y'all later. 